For those of us who don't possess the talent, or let's be real, the athleticism, to make it into professional sport, sports video games are the closest we'll ever get to living out our fantasies of being on that big stage. Nice cock. Kicking that goal, scoring that touchdown, or hitting that clutch free pointer to win your team the championship. We know what the main ones are, Madden, 2K, FIFA, or EAFC, whatever it's called these days. Some of the most popular sports in the world garner the most demand and the most budget for video games. But what happens when your sport is a bit more niche? What happens when your sport is played professionally in only one country? AFL fans, and in particular AFL fans who happen to be massive nerds such as yours truly, have been crying out for an AFL game from EA or 2K. It's been a long time dream of ours. and. Last year, it seemed like the dream was finally going to become a reality. AFL 23 from Big Ant Studios had easily the most hype, the most budget, and the most promise of any AFL video game in history. And yet, as of recording this video on the 9th of January 2024, the player numbers on PC are in the single digits. So what the hell happened? Today, we're talking about the bitterly disappointing downfall of AFL 23. Remarkably, AFL has quite a long history of video game adaptations despite being such a small market. AFL video games have been consistently coming out since the first AFL game came out in 1989 titled Australian Rules Football, made by the British for some reason. Since then we've gotten a lot more. Some of them have been okay, some of them have been kind of shit ass. Some of them have been pretty good. Some highlights include Aussie Rules Footy on the NES. Out of bound, on the full. AFL 99 by EA, which includes a, <laughs> includes a punch up mechanic where you can assault your opponent while your teammates wait on the sidelines politely for the fight to stop. AFL Live 2004 and AFL Premiership 2007, we got one of the best video games of all time in AFL Mascot Matter. Unironically, one of the best AFL games we've had in AFL Live, where it's rumored that our friends Big Ant Studios went way over budget, and as a result, they lost the license. Wicked Witch was on the side working on AFL Wii, which according to Big Ant CEO Ross Simons, shared a lot of assets and development with AFL Live. For a long time, we didn't really get anything until 2017 when AFL Evolution from True Blue and Wicked Witch was released. And you know, it was okay. Um, still a lot to improve on though. In 2020, they got another crack at it with AFL Evolution 2, and despite some glitches and a rocky start, it came out to be a pretty good game. And the AFL community seems to have really gotten around EVO 2. Tons of content creators streaming the game and making videos on the game, some of which ended up getting hundreds of thousands of views. And don't get me wrong, the game had its drawbacks, but as someone who played almost 300 hours of EVO 2 on the PC, it seemed comparatively the most complete AFL game we've had for a while. There was considerable improvement from EVO 1 to EVO 2. I'm going to take an educated guess and say that if Wicked Witch got to develop AFL Evolution 3, it would have been pretty bloody good. But for one reason or another, they lost a license and a familiar face would get another crack at making their own AFL video game after almost a decade. Big Ant Studios. As I touched on earlier, they had experience in the AFL video game market with AFL Live 2011. And for one reason or another, they seem to have some beef with Wicked Witch. At least it seems that way when you look through Ross Simons' big footy account. And then also you got this passive aggressive jab in this old interview that I found with Ross. You know, we've had versions of the game where you kick a goal and the whistle's blown. The ball is slammed towards goal by a friend. You know what I mean? Get real. Seriously. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Have any of you guys ever seen a game of footy? Like, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's... A lot of this stuff is buried in old big footy forum posts, but if I was to speculate, Maybe it has something to do with Wicked Witch getting the next game, AFL Live 2, after Big Ant got the boot. Or maybe Ross just doesn't think they're as passionate about AFL as them, I guess. You have to do it right. Yeah. And yeah, you've got to do it with people who are passionate about the sport. Yeah. But in any case, Ross the boss took this old beef personally, and he would carry it with him for the next decade. And when AFL Evolution 2 faced a foreshadowing launch full of glitches and problems, Big Chungus, 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 
Big Chungus. Big Chungus. Ross was there in the Big Footy forums, passively aggressively posting clips of Mitch Robinson reacting to issues with the kicking mechanics in the game, among other jabs as the game speaks for itself. And he's also proposing that there's some conspiracy on Wicked Witch's part to slander Ross and his old AFL live game. Makes sense. But after talking such a big game, Ross and Big Ant would finally get a chance to put their money where their mouth is. Now between late 2021 and early 2022, we began to get word that a new AFL game may be coming out soon. When Ross started to tease something big on Twitter, the hype entered power drive almost immediately. Big Ant Studios worked away throughout all of 2022. They gave attendees of the 2022 Grand Final Footy Festival a sneak peek of their game with their very own booth, no less. Strangely enough, they actually depicted Sydney showing up on Grand Final Day. Issues with realism aside, people were pumped. And when the AFL included gameplay of the new game in their season 2023 hype video, people got even more pumped. Ross was balls deep in the big footy forums, giving people insights into development and exchanging some thoughts, ideas, and even energy regarding ideas and the future of AFL games with Big Ant Studios. He exclusively revealed that the game would feature motion captured animations and celebrations. Every player in the AFL and AFLW would have their face scanned into the game. A ton of different footy grounds would be available. A fuck ton of old classic guernseys for each footy club. Their academy mode from their cricket and tennis games, which was pretty well received, would be adapted for AFL. We got a high def geological scanner to scan the uniforms whilst being worn on a mannequin to get realistic uniform wrinkles. We were getting better graphics, new cutscenes. Ross himself was going to appear in the game for some reason. The crowd members looked like actual people and not the $5 Halloween costumes from Party City. Ross revealed that AFL 23 had the biggest number of pre-orders in their company's history. The hype for this game was unlike anything we had ever seen in the history of AFL video games. Big Ant and the AFL hosted a huge launch event where they would unveil the cover and the gameplay. They invited several AFL players as well as some of the biggest and most important names in the social media scene, but not me, which hurts. But I can't, I can't complain too much because I've pretty much minimized my chances of getting invited to the AFL 25 event by making this video, but oh well. Ross got up on stage and announced that they were using groundbreaking motion capture technology imported from America, never before seen in Australia. AFL 23 would have the biggest budget in the history of video games for sports uh, in Australia. His words, not mine. AFL 23 from us has secured the biggest budget uh, in the history of video games for sports in Australia by many multiples. And when the trailer dropped, my God, we could barely contain ourselves. We were already hyped, but then Ross burst into our dining room and slammed his big, throbbing, phallic, main selling point for a shiny new video game onto the table pro team you get to build your own super team full of some of the afl's greatest of all time for every afl fan who grew up playing madden or fifa this was a dream come true my god it was exciting mark your calendars take the day off work lock your wife and kids in the basement to eliminate distractions because on april 13th 2023 afl 23 will be coming all over us like a librarian. It's taken almost 30 years, but we finally have a good video game for AFL. Oh, what's this gonna be? Uh-oh! Oh, buckle ball! Big time power ball! Brock's down, the beast is wounded! Two! We have a brand new champion for doing their destiny! This is it. All roads lead to April 13th, when all of a sudden, disaster strikes. There's a delay. Apparently, there's an issue with the physical discs not getting into stores in time for April 13th. And so, to be fair for the civilized people who play on PC, they've had to delay it for everybody. But no big deal. It's only a couple weeks extra. We'll see you on May the 4th. People are a bit miffed, but you know, fair enough. 
Ross and Big Ant had established enough good faith with their transparency and openness with the community over the years, people were willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. May the 4th is getting closer when all of a sudden there's another problem. Those who are unfortunate enough to be gifted an Xbox for Christmas would receive yet another kick in the balls when it was announced that AFL 23 for the Xbox would be postponed until June. And to make it fair for Xbox users, this meant that Pro Team, aka the main reason everybody's buying this video game in the first place, would be pushed back as well. Now people were still somehow optimistic despite rumblings from skeptics starting to grow in volume, but it's all good. As long as PC and PlayStation players got a decent enough game, surely we could keep ourselves entertained while we waited for Xbox and Pro Team. Once again, we gave Big Ant the benefit of the doubt, and there was still plenty of hype. The sneak peeks we were getting looked promising enough, and we were hyped for May 4th, having live streams counting down the day, and then finally, on the morning of May the 4th, the game goes live with a $100 price tag. Money, 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 money. Now, me personally, I logged onto PC and immediately there was a problem. The game wouldn't even launch. And uh, let's get, let's get cracking. Let's jump in. Hello, are we jumping in? We're not jumping in. Okay, hold up. But luckily, this was the only major problem I'd end up having with stability. Um, PlayStation players weren't as lucky. What the fuck? Oh, there we have it. There we have it. Well, we can add one to the crash counter. There's one. It's fucking crashed! Oh, fuck! Another crash! In the fourth quarter, we're knocking. I let that run through and it still crashes, dude. Fuck's sake! The fact that they charge 100 for this game is laughable. Well, for this version of the game, they shouldn't be charging any more than, honestly, $5. Because of shit like this! Seriously! Oh, I'm sick of this fucking shit! You are a fucking disgrace, big ant! Oh my god, another crash! Oh my god, alright, crash number six. Has that fucking crashed again! Oh, big ant! No! Oh, why? Oh, fuck off! Of course that fucking crashes! Oh, this is bullshit! As I jumped into a game to record a video for AFL 23, things looked good. I was blinded by the flashy graphics that looked out of this world. Immediately, I began to notice some issues though. The lighting in the high up stands was non-existent. <laughs> the cheer squads were on the wrong side of the ground. The scoreboards didn't exist in game. The interchange didn't work. So the only way I could get 2024 Brownlow medalist Will Ashcroft onto the ground was to put him in the starting lineup pre-game. The players unfortunate enough to get put on the interchange bench were Fano snapped out of existence and I had no idea what the controls were. There were no training or tutorial modes as promised. You had to pause the game and look in settings to see what was going on, but I still brushed it all off, you know? I was confident that these issues would get addressed in future patches. But as my two hour long playthrough of the game went on, I began to notice more and more red flags. Where was Mitch Robinson's mo-capped Charlie Cameron celebration? But little did I know, this would only be the tip of the iceberg. Bro, look at that. <laughs> That's good vision. They've given it back. Yeah, what do you mean? Come on, Dana, huh? Oh, let's... Oh my God, what do you mean? I'm so cheeky. Wait, what the f That was not too far. What the hell is going on? Now it's a boundary throw in? Oh! Oh, that should have been deliberate. I accidentally hit the button. Go, Harris. What the fuck? What, what is that handball? What the f He just. What the f is that? He just kicked it. Just kicked it into his teammate. Why is why are these handballs so retarded? Go another barrel. Oh my fucking no! What do you mean? Ah. Uh. What? 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 What the fuck? What? 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 What the fuck do you mean? What are you fucking What? What? Oh, what the fuck is going on here? What is this camera angle? Bro, what is this camera angle? F fix the damn. The Lions put together an excellent first half. <laughs> They're firing on all cylinders. 
But after all that, I still thought it was a decent enough game, you know? The cutscenes were good, the grounds looked nice, the academy, including the player and stadium creators, seemed to have a huge amount of potential, and even though the game seemed pretty easy, I just chalked it up to me being good and playing on a lesser difficulty. But as I finished my video and I logged onto social media, I began to realize that something was wrong. Something was really, really wrong. When people have counters in the corner of a live stream of your game, you've got problems. When Adam Simpson is the goal umpire, you've got problems. When people are already going back to the previous video game made by your arch nemesis, you've got major problems. I could go into detail about every major issue found, but I'm just going to quickly list off a few to give you a feel for what day one of AFL 23 was like. So yeah, something's gone horribly wrong with this game that was supposed to be the best Australian sporting game of all time. <laughs> You know, there's tons of missing features, tons of missing aspects of the game. I mentioned interchange, but but it got to the stage where multiple free kicks were getting taken out to make sure the game wouldn't break. They literally had to modify the fabric of our actual sport. They had to remove the DNA of our sport just so their fucking video game wouldn't crash. The AI was completely broken. Like you could run from one end of the ground to the other without somebody going near you with a 10 foot pole. Quite frankly, the AI was far more A than I. So you can have bugs yeah, and, you can have fail happens. and you can have failure and things like that, but you can't have things that don't exist. You know what I mean? Get real, seriously. Yeah, it's <laughs> have any of you guys ever seen a game of footy like, yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. People couldn't even pick up the ball in online. We were constantly getting stuck with COVID crowds despite the setting being turned up to the maximum. Every AFL coach was replaced with this leukemia patient who looks like he's about to inform you that he is the one who knocks. Interchange benches were straight up invading the ground and getting stuck in the center circle. The movement was fundamentally broken where you would get stuck in the mud if you had the ball or if your opponent was leading out of the forward 50. Hand passing was unstable or pretty much unusable. And there's probably a bunch of other issues that I've missed out completely. But if I listed every minute problem with this video game, we'd be here all day. But in short, the game's fucked. Ironically, the game that was supposed to show up Ross's rivals would end up having the same problems that Evo 2 was plagued with in its early days. Even worse when it's another undercover wicked witch employee calling me out. Dude needs to reward his post so it at least sounds like he's been to a game or two and not a dev. Oh wow. Better luck next time. Wasn't going to post again but wicked witch keep dragging me back in. My verdict on the game. I'll leave that to me. Why is it fucking kicking backwards? I'm pressing circle and aiming at the goal. And it kicks backwards, 40 meters. You're the worst game ever, Evo. Ah. Uh. What? 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 What the fuck? Why is it fucking kicking backwards? I'm pressing circle and aiming at the goal. And it kicks backwards, 40 meters. You're the worst game ever, Evo. <laughs> What? What? Oh. <laughs> what kind of place is this? So what the hell happened? Now, if you want to listen to Big Ant, you can. I'm not going to tell you what you should and shouldn't believe. Uh, but at this point, I don't think anybody would be particularly critical with you if you chose not to do that. But they basically came out with a statement acting as shocked as everybody else that this had happened to their own game. They offered no apology, no real transparency. They insinuated that some unspecific act of God, be it a game-breaking glitch that made its way past all of the developers, uh, a, a plug gets unplugged that wasn't supposed to be, or maybe, maybe, it's those dastardly wicked witch employees from the big footy forums that were tormenting Ross with differing opinions, and now they've come back three years later to ruin his magnum opus. We, we're not really sure, but whatever it was, it basically made all of Big Ant's hype and expectations and promises go away, at least temporarily. And Big Ant, Ross, and the AFL themselves were in full damage control mode, promising fixes, promising patches, promising more, and begging for patience and a second chance. And believe it or not, people were more than willing to do that. 
Because of the opaque PR strategy that Big Ant were employing, many creators, especially those who played the game at the launch event, genuinely believed that they had uploaded the wrong version of the game and that everything would be sorted in a matter of a couple of days. I believe that myself. I really wanted that to be true because all I and everybody watching this video want is a good AFL game. At the end of the day, going to bed, I felt deflated. You know, I really wanted this game to be good, but it wasn't. And even though there was still hope with upcoming patches, it was up to Big Ant to get themselves out of this mess. So how did they respond? Well, Big Ant released two day one patches in a panic to try and fix the game, which did seem to do a lot of good, but there was obviously a long way to go. People were still somehow against all odds, optimistic and hopeful for the future of AFL 23, simply because the potential for this game was huge. The graphics were great, the cutscenes were awesome, and the little details such as the grand final patches on jumpers, you know, if they get the basic shit right, including the interchange, the actual rules of the game, the, get the scoreboards working, fix the atmosphere and the crowds, get the cheer squads on the right side of the oval, you know, bring back the players on the bench, flesh out the management career so you can sink more hours into it, maybe even give us a single player career as a show of good faith after the rocky launch. If you could do all that, there was something there. There was it, it, it was almost there, you know? And as time went on, it seemed like things were on the right track. We were getting daily patches. The game was getting pretty good, but there was still no pro team. There was still no explanation as to what happened. And there were glaring issues in the movement mechanics that still weren't being fixed. The updates began to get more vague and less frequent. People were starting to get frustrated that there was still no pro team. There was still no Xbox. There was still no apology. And you know, Big Ant was seemingly being pretty dismissive about these concerns, even though they haven't delivered on the main reason why everybody wanted to buy this game. And as Cricket 24 was released, Big Ant's attention was taken up by their more important and more profitable release. And the updates would stop altogether around August. When people pointed this out, Big Ant responded in a very passive aggressive manner, asserting that the game received very frequent updates and that it's unreasonable to expect updates during the off season. Meanwhile, on PC, the game's player base is down approximately 92% from its peak in May. And you know, speaking of Steam charts, they're not the most accurate and there was no doubt more people playing on PlayStation than PC, but it's the only numbers that are publicly available regarding concurrent player numbers. You know, Sony doesn't make those numbers public and at this point, I don't think Ross is all too happy to share those numbers himself. So it's all we have to work with. I wanna point out a specific date on these Steam charts. November 19th, 2023, AFL 23 had a 24 hour peak of seven people playing. Now, I can already hear you screaming at your TV. Well, egg footy, it's the AFL off season. Of course, nobody's playing AFL 23. And you know, that's all well and good until we take a look at AFL Evolution 2's numbers for the exact same day. They would have a 24 hour peak of nine players. They had more people playing their game than AFL 23. Having less players at any point at any hour, at any moment in time, then a game that's not even for sale anymore is inexcusable. It's painfully ironic that Ross Simons has this beef with Wicked Witch where he hates their game, he points out their shortcomings, only for him to get beaten by their own video game when it's not even on sale anymore. They had to take it off the Steam store because the license got revoked. One thing that happened as well, I, I came across this old big footy post of Ross Simons posting a clip of Mitch Robinson raging at a glitch in AFL EVO 2. But then his own game three years later has the exact same problem. And I ended up encountering it in my video. And I posted this to Twitter only to get blocked on Twitter by Big Ant Studios and Ross Simons' own personal account. And I didn't even tag them in the post. They, they had to manually find this post. They had to manually search for this post to block me instead of fixing their fucking video game. Oh yeah, and as all of this was going on, AFL 23 was quietly released on Xbox in September. Remember when they said June? They said that they'd release Pro Team around the same time as Xbox, but there's still nothing, so... Oh well. I know it's been a whole video of me whining about a video game, but 
I thought I'd mention that apparently there's a big 2024 update coming at some point. And this potentially includes finally releasing Pro Team. Uh, but we know at the very least we're getting Harley Reid, so yay. But honestly, at this point, people seem to be just about done with Big Ant and Ross Simons, uh, which sucks, you know? Like after being active in the big footy forums for almost a decade, Ross has completely deserted his account and that's shit to see, you know? And there's barely any content coming out from the community. You know, the big footy forum on this game, which spans 353 pages long, has completely died. And you know, it sucks to see. I remember being in the chat of Cardman22's AFL23 hype stream and that night feels a million years away when you look at the situation the game is in now. I think the best thing for Big Ant to do at this point is to do something to earn everybody's trust back, like a new game mode or even an apology sale. You know, the fact that it's still $100 for AFL 23 now is peak arrogance. They've never released a full explanation for what happened and the attitude throughout this whole thing has been really arrogant and unapologetic and you know you reap what you sow. As it stands right now, the game's in the shitter, a, a game with so much promise and hype reduced to this and you know what's so unbelievably frustrating about this entire scenario is that this could have been a culture defining game you know this game could have had the same impact as madden and nba 2k of course that's before they became soulless cash grabs but this could have been a game that's talked about 30 years later like other afl games are today but in five years time if things don't improve if you say AFL 23, people will respond with, oh yeah, you mean that shitty game where Adam Simpson was the goal umpire? And that fucking sucks. On a personal level, looking back at all the AFL Evo 2 content is sad. I missed out on all that. You know, it looked fun. AFL creators streaming the game, playing with each other, creating AFL player versions of themselves. I didn't get to be a part of that because everybody had already moved on by the time I started making content in 2022. And you know, it seemed like a very wholesome and friendly community. Handball it just to the goal square. So some good games on Sundays. <laughs> football science is his he useful is so greedy greedy sandwich. Of I, I hope the siren blows on his life. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? Oh my god! <laughs> but for real though, the release of AFL 23 is, is killed any hope of that happening again with this new game and that that's a shame and this isn't a hit piece on big ant studios and ross simons you know the developers aren't bad people and you know ross hasn't handled this particularly well but it's not like he's this villain so we, we've got don bradman cricket and we're showing it at ev in swanson street yes and this little kid rolls up <laughs> and he's got a camera i was in year 12 at the time and he says to me he says to me, can I record? And I go, no problem, no yeah. problem at all. And then EB, and then, and then, no. then he goes and asks the EB manager and he says, can I record? And the EB manager says, well, now that you've actually asked me, no. <laughs> anyway, rookie mistake, that's fine. Yeah. You've learned by now. But you may, you may have had a downside in not being able to film in EB, but I felt so sorry for this kid. I actually invited him back to Big Ant. I know. We did a one-on-one -on -one interview. I know. Which was the world premiere, only first interview of for Don Bradman Cricket. Like, so you were it. Yeah, I know. Like, you had the I was absolute- the exclusive. You had the exclusive I'm for the world, <laughs> for the world for DBC. And look how far you've come. If I were to speculate, I think what happened was that they overextended. You know, the scope of the game got too big and they didn't give themselves enough time. Um, it seems like the game needs another year in development and they ended up falling into the trap that most game companies fall into these days where they release a half-baked product held together by tape and then they try to patch themselves into a more playable state a little bit later down the line. I don't think they intentionally scammed us. It's just that for one reason or another, shit happened. If this new update that's supposedly coming fixes everything and the game's awesome and this time next year there's a thriving AFL 23 community and this video ages horribly, awesome. I'll make a video congratulating Big Ant for doing the impossible. Even if AFL 23 is no good, I, I still want them to make AFL 25 and I still want it to be an absolute banger. Because at the end of the day, I and everybody else watching this video right now just want a fun AFL game to play. And look, as a sign of good faith, I've even made the AFL 25 cover to give you guys a head start. Hopefully you can ride this momentum into creating a banger video game and at some point we can all laugh about this sad story and we're all enjoying AFL 25 or AFL 23, whatever, whatever happens from here. 
I told you all this game would be shit. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. I had to re-record this video like three times due to issues with my new mic, but hopefully it's all sorted now. I am starting TAFE in a couple of weeks, so I'm going to have to rework my schedule to make sure the uploads are consistent. I'm changing the policy of tier two and tier three channel members getting videos early. Now tier one members will be included in getting videos three days early. I don't want to discriminate against people just because they're giving me a smaller amount of money. You know, that, that doesn't sit right with me. So I want to include everybody who contributes to the channel financially in this, in this little promotion of mine. So yeah, like, subscribe and uh, ciao. Big shout out to our tier 3 channel members, Sharks Ray, Big Mac John, I hate the lions and think Flagmantle24 is real, Old Mate 1, PA Foopy, Trey Matanich 100, and last but certainly not least, Sean Ducks. Please consider becoming a channel member, tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3. Any support is greatly appreciated.